Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. If you have a copy of the Word of God, turn there with me uh, to the 23rd Psalm, probably the most popular, famous, well-known chapter in all of the Bible. How many of you remember? God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Then we modernized it a little bit. And the preacher would stand before the congregation and does quite often and says, uh, God is good. And the congregation would say, all the time. And then the preacher would say, all the time. And the congregation would go, God is good. Is he really? What about when you're in pain? Is God still good? When you're suffering, is God still good? When you're grieving, is God still good? When you face major disappointment, is God still good? What about in the midst of your depression, is God still good? Uh, this whole series is about the goodness of God. I, I don't know, 11 or 12 weeks, uh, we're going to spend right here in the 23rd Psalm. And we're going to talk about the goodness of God. That's what this psalm is all about. It's about God's goodness and God's mercy that literally is running after us, chasing after us, pursuing us every day of our life. And I want to just focus in on that during these couple of months that we are going to be together. Now, two things that I want to do today. Um, the first thing is, is that I want to talk about what happens when we get our focus of attention off of the goodness of God. When we get our focus of attention on other things other than God being good to us. Um, what are the negative influences of that? What happens negatively uh, when we fail to acknowledge God's goodness? And then I want to spend the latter half of the message and I want to just give an overview of what we're going to be doing in these next couple of months and just looking at the entirety of the psalm and, and very briefly kind of just give you a little taste uh, of what the messages are going to be about. I hope you got a pencil and maybe follow along with us a little bit. Uh, as we talk this morning is why is God so good to me? Now there are what I have uh, put together this morning is that there are four negative consequences that come as a result of us uh, getting our focus of attention off of the goodness of God. Now, let me give them to you in, in no really particular order, but just say to you, when we get our attention off of the goodness of God, one of the things that happens is that it affects our praise. First thing, there are four of them that it affects our praise. Uh, do you remember the story in Luke chapter 12? Uh, when this dude, he's a gazillionaire. I mean, he's got more money than he knows what to do with. And he gets to looking at all of the things that he possesses and he says, wow, man, I've got more stuff here than I ever dreamed that I would ever have. I've been so successful at everything that I've ever done and I, I don't know what to do with all of this stuff. I couldn't spend it in a lifetime. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to tear down these little warehouses and I'm going to build me some bigger warehouses so that I can store all of this stuff up. And the thing that he failed to acknowledge was he wouldn't have had any of it if God hadn't given it to him. And, and he got to thinking to himself, this is, a, this is the product of my own. God says to him, you're a fool. Before the day is over, you're going to die. And I'm going to take all of this stuff that you have amassed and I'm going to give it to somebody that will acknowledge where it came from and praise me for it. Uh, what, 
what a serious thing that that man fell into. I ask you a question today. What's the worst sin that you've ever committed? Hmm? Think about that a minute. What's the worst sin that you have ever done in your life? Some of you say, well, you know, I, I was immoral. I was sexually unfaithful. I took something that didn't belong to me. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of pride, ego in my life. You know, I, I'm convinced with all of my heart that uh, one of the major things that God detests is when we fail to acknowledge his goodness and we take credit for stuff that he did. You say, well, wait just a minute, preacher. Now, um, you, you have to understand that I built this business. It was my business plan that I put. Well, who gave you the mind to come up with a business plan? Well, it was the sweat of my brow. Well, who gave you the energy? It was the work of my hands. Well, who gave you the hands? You understand, folks, that we wouldn't, ha we wouldn't have anything if God hadn't given it to us. And so one of the things that happens in our life is that we get looking around and thinking we're something and we take away from God what is rightfully his and that's the praise for his goodness toward us. Uh, we wouldn't have anything had it not been for the Lord. I, I get to thinking about the people that are complaining about America today. We're, we're still living in the greatest country on the face of the earth and I am grateful to God for his blessings uh, on us. One of the signs of the last days, you listen to this now, one of the signs of the last days, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the last days. And one of the signs is this, says 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abu abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. God says to us, don't ever forget where this comes from. One of, the, one of the telltale signs of 2 Timothy 3, 2 was a, a couple of months ago uh, when uh, a particular state uh, and the governor of that state uh, was looking at the COVID numbers and they had drastically decreased in his state and he made the most arrogant statement that ran chills up and down my spine when he said, and God didn't have anything to do with it. God help us when we steal the praise away from God. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, what do you have that God hasn't given you? James 1 and 7 says, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. Everything that we have, we have received from the Lord. So the first consequence of failing to acknowledge and see the goodness of God is that it affects our praise. Second, it affects my prayers. It affects my, when I fail to acknowledge God's goodness and I take my focus of attention off of his goodness and his mercy, it has a diametrical effect on my prayer life. I want to ask you a question. Think with me for just a minute. What are you asking God for right now that you don't have the ability yourself to provide? I wonder how many of us right now are trusting God for something that only God can do. Um, when you forget the goodness of God, then one thing happens that happens to a lot of people, prayer becomes a last resort rather than a first response. Uh, 20 times in the New Testament alone, God commands us that we are to pray and to ask him for things. Matthew 7, 7 says, uh, ask and you shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, and those are present perfect participles. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Don't 
stop, don't quit. One of the telltale signs that we have really forgotten the goodness of God is when our prayer lives become namby-pamby, when our prayer lives become real wimpy, when our prayer lives become very anemic. And, and you say, well, you know, Pastor, I just don't want to bother God with the little things. You know, God cares about the little things in your life. If, if, if God is caring enough to know how many hair fell off your head and went down the drain this morning when you took a shower, he cares about the little stuff going on in your life. And he wants us to ask him about that. Uh, I want to ask you, do, you, do you trust God more today than you did two years ago? Or are you just kind of stagnated in your prayer life? Maybe you're just stale uh, in your prayer life and you fail to ask God uh, for stuff in your life. But now I want to caution you a minute. Keep in mind that God is not like some holy vending machine that you go out and say a little prayer, mash a button, and boom, the answer falls out of the machine. That's not God. That's not how he ap operates. One of the hardest lessons in life is to know and come to realize that God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. Simply because you don't get the answer right away doesn't mean that God's not going to answer it. So you got to love the Lord and you, you say you love him. Then you got to trust him. And if you trust him, then you got to depend on him for not only the big things in life, you got to think about the little things in life as well. My wife's here today. She hates it when I use her for an illustration. But I think she would want me to tell you this story. The other day, um, there was a, a pretty bad windstorm and rainstorm that came through. And uh, it knocked a lot of limbs and twigs and kind of garbage and trash and pine cones and all kinds of stuff in our yard. And uh, happened to be one of the weekends that we were not here uh, with you and preaching uh, that weekend. And we went out on Saturday and uh, we started picking up all of the, the, the debris that the storm had caused in our yard and putting them in big old paper bags, about four foot high. We were just filling them up and filling them up, had a couple of them filled up already. And all of a sudden I looked up, my, my wife was just wet with perspiration. And she looked and she said, uh, I don't remember if I had my glasses on when I came out here or not. <laughs> and... She says, I don't know where they are. So we just kind of stopped and uh, never thought about anything except just going in the house and trying to find her glasses. And so we went in and we searched the house over, looked in every place imaginable, went to the car, looked into the car, just nothing. So we thought, well, she must have lost them and, uh, out in the yard. And so we just searched the yard and and bless her heart, she's blind as a bat without those glasses. <laughs> and we looked everywhere for those glasses and couldn't find them. And, and, and Kathy just was in despair. I can't see. What, what am I going to do? So we, we, we did again, looked the house over again. And then the next morning, Sunday morning, we get up and uh, we watched the, our live stream broadcast together. And Justin preached a great word. And we loved the music and had great fellowship. And and then we thought, well, you know, let's, I got up and I went out to the yard again and I just searched the yard over, searched the house over, searched the car over, all over again and just no glasses. And I came in and I sat down in the den and I just said, Lord, my wife can't see. And, and this is messing her up and it's going to be days before we could ever get any more glasses. God, would you help me get those glasses? And I got up out of the chair. It's about four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And I went back to the yard and in less than a minute, there were those glasses over in a bush. You say, come on, Mike. Does God care about that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
What are you asking God for today that only he can do? You understand something. Hear my heart a minute. The goodness, this is worth the price of admission. The goodness of God is not based upon your level of goodness. Psalm 69 says, answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. God's goodness toward us is based on his love for us not on how good we are to him. Let me give you number three. You ready for this? When I get my focus of attention off of the goodness of God, it affects my protection. So what do you mean by that? Well, Psalm 16 says, protect me, O God, because I trust in you. You are my Lord, and every good thing I have comes from you. Do you know that even in the bad times, God is good? Even in the bad times, God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a reason. And in these days in mine and Kathy's life, we're learning more and more and more and more and we're watching it manifested before our very eyes that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. Is everything good? Absolutely not. Are there some bad things that happen? Absolutely. But God still is good. Let me give you number four. It affects my perspective. When I get my focus of attention off of the goodness of God, it affects how I look at tomorrow. It affects my, uh, my hope, for lack of a better word right now. It, it, it affects how I see what's going to happen in the future. In Psalm chapter 27, the Bible says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. What do, you, what do you think God's saying there to all of us? I believe he's saying don't get in a hurry. Don't be impulsive. Don't jump ahead of the gun. How many of you actually do pray about the big purchases that you make in your life? Hmm? How many of you just really seek the Lord about, maybe you're getting ready to buy something costs a lot of money. Have you ever just stopped and said, now, Lord, before I put this credit card down or before I write this check, uh, is this something that I ought to buy or are you want me to wait so you could give it to me? I'll give you an example. I didn't give this to the other crowd. I didn't know whether I to or not. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a golfer. And uh, I like to play. And, and so, you know, this, this particular club is advertised as being the best. And everybody says it's the best. And so they, they had a demonstration and you could go hit it and, and they would fit you for it and it'd be just customized just for you. And so I, I went to, to a particular country club and I, I spent about two hours there one day doing nothing but hitting that club. And they said, okay, here's the shaft that you need. and Here's a particular head that you need. And, and I said, well, okay. And, and they said, and here's how much it's going to cost. <laughs> I felt real led to pray for God to give me that <laughs> set of clubs. I didn't buy them. I wanted them. I wanted them. They were nice. They felt good. But, but I wasn't going to just, no. Never have, never will. I said, well, God, if you want to give them to me, then that'll be great. And I've never mentioned it to anybody. And about two months ago, somebody gave me a used set, just like the ones that I had tried out. If you ever just prayed, but God, do you want me to have this? Do you want to give it to me or is this something that I should? Uh, praying, the perspective on the future 
for God to take care of you. Don't get in a hurry. Now, some of you, uh, you say, I really, 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 really want to get married. God, I don't want to be by myself anymore, and I'm going to go get married. And you leave, and you go outside, and you find the first man with a beating heart, and you get married, and then you regret it for the rest of your life. Can I get a witness? From, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want to know. But, but I can just tell you that most of the problems that God's people that I know are suffering are coming as a result of not delayed gratification. Wanting it right then and right now. My, I would just challenge you. Go home today and sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and just simply write down the things that you ought to be thankful that God has given you that come from his goodness and his life. Now, the rest of the message is kind of like a table of contents uh, for what is upcoming in the next couple of months. And, and I hope that you'll hang in with me. You understand, we can look at the negatives of not seeing the goodness of God, but I want to spend these next few weeks in talking to you about the benefits that come as a result of focusing in on the goodness of God. Number one, here we go. I want to talk about the inward benefits. I want to talk about inward benefits, outward benefits, and the upward benefits. So here are the inward benefits. Notice what he says in the psalm. I shall not, what? I shall not want. Now, now what is God saying? If God has promised that to me as his child, that I'm going to meet every need that you have in your life and you will want for nothing, then why in the world do I spend useless time in worrying? When God says, you won't have a want in the world. We'll talk about that. Then he says, it makes me, and part of the inward benefit is that he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now that is a metaphor from God talking about internal peace that we have with him, about true peace. Notice what he said there. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Has God ever made you lie down? God ever forced you to lie down? Has God ever led you and forced you and made you? Because the fact of the matter is, we're not as smart as we think we are. We're not as intelligent as we want to pretend to be. And we go out here as hard as we can working and making a living, doing all that we can, burning the candle at both ends, and sometimes God has to teach us how to rest and how to relax. And so he makes us lie down in green pastures. Then the Bible says he restores my soul. I don't tell you, I know what that's like. If you're ever in the ministry at all, you'll understand this one. And you don't have to be in the ministry because the fact of the matter is that a lot of you do the same thing, is that you go and you go and you go and you give and you give and you give until you don't have anything left. And the Bible says that he gives you, this is what, what, what this passage means, is that he renews your strength and he puts back energy in you that you have expended. Here's a, here's a way I like to put it when I'm talking to the staff or I'm talking to other churches, and, and that is, is how to lead when you run, are running on empty. I can just tell you, when you're running on empty, God restores your soul, and he puts the pump in, and he holds the handle down until you are filled back up so you can go back and serve him even more. So he restores your soul. Now watch this. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
Now, these are tools of the shepherd, and we're gonna, we'll describe them. We'll talk about those tools. <clears throat> they, they, these, this rod and this staff are tools of the shepherd that are for the good of the sheep. Um, he will protect me. Here's the protection part. He will protect me when I am at the point in my life that I feel insecure. We got all of that to look forward to in the inward look of God. Now here's the outward benefits. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. How many of you, uh, how many of you get to the point sometimes in your life that you just don't know what to do? You don't know which direction to go in. You don't know which way to turn. You, you don't know what decision that you need to make in life. And it stresses you out because you don't know what step to take. Let me just tell you, the day that you turned away from sin and placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he took up residence within you and you now have a guide to point you in the right directions, to lead you in the path that he would have you to go. God's not playing games with you. Uh, watch this one. And we sang about this over and over a few minutes ago. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Hey, church, when you come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God didn't come along and promise you that everything was going to be smooth sailing. You're going to have hard times. You're going to have difficult days. There are going to be ups and downs and valleys. And there are going to be all kinds of fearful things that are going to come your way in this life. But God says, yeah, you're going to have trials and tests and difficulties. But just know this. You're not by yourself. I am with you and I'm never going to leave you and I'm never going to forsake you. So don't be afraid. And by the way, when, when you've got Jesus, greater is he that is in you than he that's ever going to come against you. All right. Um, now notice this one. This, this is one of my favorites. You prepare a table. And, and by the way, put in parentheses beside the word table is the word banquet. Now, many of your translations may have banquet there. You prepare a banquet table for me in front of all my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. God says, I'm not only going to meet every need of your life, I'm going to give you more than you could ever imagine that would come your way that absolutely overflows in abundance toward you. I can't wait to get into this point with you in a few weeks uh, because I'm, I'm going to talk about an issue that maybe you don't hear about too much and it's the favor of God on our lives. And I use the word favor as a synonym for the word grace, for the grace of God. And I'm just getting to thinking about God's favor on my life and how he took an old mountain boy out of western North Carolina, 10 miles behind nothing, and brought him and put him in a position where he is at today. The only explanation is the favor of God, the grace of God. And I just want to tell you, listen, I want to talk to you during that time about how that God will smile over you. All right? We're going to have a good time with that. Now listen to this one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, I found out that other people will abuse you. Other people will mistreat you. And, and they will treat you unfairly. But the, the neat thing about God is that God is so consistent that he chases after me with his goodness. He chases after me in his grace and love toward us. And, and that no, I, I have no idea right now, none whatsoever, 
what the future is going to hold. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what's ahead out there for me and my life. I don't know what's ahead out there for you in your life. But I do know this, that God is going to be with me that God is there and I know that as long as God is with me, no matter what tomorrow holds, no matter what the future has, I know that I'm going to be all right. Do you believe that? It's going to be okay because I'm not alone. God is with me. Now let me close with the upward benefits of acknowledging the goodness of God. Now notice what he says. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Woo-wee. That's a long time, isn't it? I'm going to be with the Lord forever. So, so when we get to thinking about Psalm 23, who doesn't want the assurance that God is with us all of the time so that we don't get completely stressed out. Who in the world doesn't want the assurance that when you're running on empty, when you have nothing left, that God's going to come in and restore your soul to you and give you the strength that you need to make it through another day. Who in the world doesn't want God to come and pour out so many blessings on you that you won't be able to contain it, that your cup overflows in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fall. Who doesn't want, listen to me, listen to me, the bank can't meet your needs. Your boyfriend can't meet your needs. Your girlfriend can't meet your needs. So where do we get all of these benefits? Where do they come from? Listen to God's word in John 10:10. 10, 10. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it in abundance. Now notice what he says in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The Old Testament puts it this way in Isaiah 69. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she's born? Though she may forget, I will never forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. <laughs> Do you know that you're tattooed on Jesus' hands? The only scars that are ever going to be in heaven are the ones that are born by the shepherd for us. And they will be a constant reminder of the eternal goodness and mercy of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ to remind us of how good he is. Some of you here today need to cry out in repentance, oh God, forgive me for getting my eyes and my focus of attention off of your goodness and getting my eyes on myself. Forgive me for self-centeredness and self-assurance, and self-reliance, and self-dependence. God, help me to get my focus of attention back on you because you are the author and the finisher of my faith. You are the giver of all good gifts. And you said you would never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm sorry that I have taken my eyes off of you. Some of you need to repent of that. Some of you need to cry out to God, God, I want to know you. I want to experience you. I want to know what it's like to be forgiven of sin. I want to know what it's like to be your child. I want to know what it's like to have the assurance that when I die that I am going to go to heaven. So God, be real to me today. Some of you need to cry out to God for that reality. Would you stand with me and let's pray, please?
Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're filled with fear today, it could be an indication that you've forgotten the goodness of God. If you're filled with anxiety today, it could be that you've forgotten the goodness of God. If you're worried today, it could be that you've forgotten the goodness of God. If you're concerned about the future, it could be that you've forgotten the goodness of God. These altars are open right now. And I'd encourage many of you to just slip out of your place and come and find a place today just to seek the Lord and get your focus of attention back on Him. Maybe it's in your marriage, maybe it's parenting, maybe it's as a son or a daughter. Maybe it's as a businessman. Maybe it's a teacher. But you've just forgotten the goodness of God. I invite you to come. Just seek the Lord. Father, have your will and your way done right now in this invitation. I I pray for anybody here that's lost and on their way to hell. Oh God, would you save their soul today before it's too late. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.